Hey everybody, I'm doing a little impromptu video here. Uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, some really interesting stuff has came happened, uh, and it's almost crazy, scary, prophetic type of stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to start at the beginning uh, of the story. Is that my great grandfather, uh, George Neuwirth, uh, in New Ulm? Uh, I'm not really quite sure of his middle name. I think it was like George Albert or something. Uh, he worked in the railroad yard in the Chicago Northwestern there and he ran a great big water purifier that basically took river water and made it palatable for railroad engines so you wouldn't get scale in the boiler and things like that. So that was that great, great grandpa. Then the other grandpa on my mom's side was actually a steam engineer on the Pennsylvania Railroad. He was running the great big engines. and. And so I've always kind of grew up with the lore of steam. And when I was five years old, after the Minneapolis Moline plant closed, I was able to go to the steam laundry that had the old steam whistle on top. And one day I was in there and the guy said, kid, do you want to blow the whistle? And of course I said, yes, absolutely. And I remember how small I was that he had to pick me up in his arms, under his one arm, and he said, put your hand on the cord. And I put it on there and he blew this giant shrieking whistle up above. So ever since then, uh, I've had a fascination with steam and everything like that, and even with that whistle, I always kept my eye on it as it was in the neighborhood. George Floyd happened, I kept my eye on it, making sure that, you know, the building didn't get wrecked or anything. If something happened to that thing, I couldn't, you know, it's just a soul connection in me. Anyway, a couple, a few weeks ago, I started to get this feeling that I should really go to the cleaners and talk to them about that whistle, but I overrode my feelings, and, uh... You should never override your feelings, but sometimes you do, and it just comes to find that it was the right thing to do. But anyway, as the days went by and stuff, I saw there was some activity in the old steam laundry, and then one day I noticed, wow, the whistle is gone. It's gone off there. And I said, oh, no. I said, man, if that thing ends up in the wrong place. So anyway... I did notice there was a dumpster next to the building, too, and I said, oh, my God, it's, is it in the dumpster? So... You know me, I'm a Southside kid, you know, and nightfall came and I snuck up there and looked in the dumpster and it wasn't there. So then I said, well, somebody else got the whistle, it's gone. And that's my fault, but I forgot about it at that point. And the next day I took my lady to work and on the way back from the where I dropped her off, I got to the corner by the third precinct and all of a sudden something kind of came down on me and said, you got to go there now. You got to go there now to the elite cleaners. So I normally turn left but I turned right and I drove down the street and as I got near there a nice lady was walking in I say a nice lady I didn't know who she was she was walking up to the door and I said ma'am I said ma'am uh, yeah are you working on the building and she said yeah what do you want and I said well there was an old steam whistle on top do you know where it is and she said it's probably in the dumpster do you want it and I said at that point no but I'd like to buy it from you I'll offer you five hundred dollars for it at that point she said yes that's a deal and there was two gentlemen young men on the top of the building that said it's up here we got it up here but what do you what are you going to do with it it's too heavy to get down i said I'll, I'll help you get it down and i didn't realize how heavy it was it's very heavy and anyway i went to procure the money and when i got on, on the way to procure the money something said you 500 isn't enough so i brought a thousand dollars with me and i'm not bragging that's not that much money anymore but it's it's a it's something but anyway I, so I got back when I got back to the place it was all locked up and everything was gone and I said oh no I missed these guys they didn't want me to have that whistle and but I saw the guys on top so that's when I said I have a story to tell you and the story I told them was this I said 200 some years ago uh, when America was established and stuff. I said that the factory came and sat on top of the land and it kicked off the Native American people and it abused them and took them. I said, then it went to Africa to get your people and bring them over here for cheap labor. And I said, it didn't stop there. They got anybody they could. They got Chinese people to build the railroads and any person that they could abuse and use, they'd get. And I'm talking about the system, quote unquote. And uh, I said, the people of Minneapolis Moline were no different. They were all different colors. They came from all different ethnic backgrounds. But when the company that bought them bought them and we know who that is they stole all their pension money and I said it's not about how what the color of your skin is I said it's about how many zeros are next to the numbers in your bank account 
So I said, when this whistle blows again someday, you'll hear all the souls of those people in there crying out that have been abused by our system. And so I want to name this whistle the Peace Whistle, the Minneapolis Peace Whistle. And I hope it can be a vehicle to bring people together in Minneapolis because we used to have commonalities like this type of thing. This thing used to blow at 8 in the morning. It used to blow at noon, 5 o'clock, and believe it or not, 9 o'clock at night, the steam whistle blew. And we all gauged our life around this whistle, and we all had that commonality that we all heard it blow. So I hope, again, it can blow. And when it does, I hope the people that hear it will think about what they can do to make life better for people. And I hope the people that have stolen from people and know in their hearts that they've stolen from people, I hope they will have a change of heart. I hope their heart will fill with peace, and I hope we'll start to get along here again. And uh, it stirs the imagination to hear this whistle blow, but that's my mission with the peace whistle. And I don't want it to ever be misconstrued that it was something to do to try to bring, uh, di bring some kind of whatever, because it belongs to every citizen of the Minneapolis, every citizen of Minnesota who's been on the bottom of the rung and tried to get up and couldn't. They're in this whistle. Their souls are. All the people who worked there so diligently all those years and got their pensions taken from them, their families and things like that, that all means a lot to people. And we have a list of people who have an affection for this whistle. And so I want the story to be told that way. So I'm just going to sign off now. But thank you so much for listening. We hope you'll get on board with this peace whistle. And we hope we can bring peace back to the land. All right? Take care. We'll talk to you soon.